everybody, this is Matt from Cincy Jungle. Today we're going to take a break from our position by position previews and I want to talk about the youth on the Bengals roster. The rookies from 2019 as well as the rookies from 2020. Youths! We're going to start off talking about the 2019 draft and actually some of the maybe misses from the 2019 draft and what we can learn from it. So they say hindsight is 2020. We're going to look at 2019 in hindsight. We will start with the quarterbacks. All right. The Bengals traded up in the fourth round for Ryan Finley. And they brought in Jake DeLagala as an undrafted free agent. Both of those guys still on the roster right now. So what this shows us is the Bengals knew that they were going to need to make a change at quarterback eventually, right? So they went out and they took a couple flyers. They took a couple shots on guys that they thought might be able to develop into something, might be the answer. They didn't know they were going to be picking first in 2020. They didn't know they were going to have the opportunity they had in 2020. So... They took a shot and they brought in some guys because they knew they were going to need some competition at that spot. Jordan Brown was the seventh round pick in 2019. Now, that one seemed a little odd because they had a lot of corners that at the time we thought they liked. But now we see that they have completely redone that group. So they anticipated that as well. All right. They took a kind of a late flyer. Not you know necessarily thinking he was going to be the starter or anything, but thinking he could push for one of these spots. We see that they now know they needed a change, and they went out and made a change this offseason with Waynes, with Alexander, but also with LaShawn Sims, with Winston Rose, with Tony Brown. So they completely remade that room, not just at the top, but the depth as well. And you know Jordan Brown may have been an indicator of that. In the sixth round, the Bengals drafted Deshaun Davis. Now, Deshaun Davis had a very bad athletic profile. And this was kind of seen as, ooh, uh, by, by a lot of people when they looked at his athletic program. But what was Deshaun Davis? Deshaun Davis was really smart. He was running that defense at Auburn. And he was a team captain. What did the Bengals do in 2020? They went out and drafted six of their seven draftees, team captains, including all of the defensive players they drafted, right? That means three for three on linebackers and Khalid Kareem, all team captains. So it showed you a little bit of what they were looking for, the type of player they were looking for. They weren't able to find a guy that had the same athletic profile as the guys they brought in this year, but it shows you that they, they valued that and that they were making a shift to bring in those types of players to surround their team, to build their team around leaders like that. So now let's talk about rookies. And again, we're going to kind of talk about last year's rookies and this year's rookies at the same time. What to expect from rookies? Number one, there will be mistakes. So I want to point out a couple guys from last year. And unfortunately, the Bengals didn't get much out of their rookies last year, uh, you know, due to some injuries and some other things. But I want to point out a couple of guys who, who stand out from last year's rookie class. Michael Jordan, day three guard, uh, eventually starting for the Bengals at left guard right now, penciling in as the starter at left guard for this season. When he started starting, there, there were some negatives there, all right? And a lot of people were, were, were kind of selling on him right away, like, oh, no, get this guy out of there, get this guy out of there. He's a rookie. And watching him early on, I was like, okay, well, he's a rookie. He's, he's all right. Give him some more reps. And that's how you have to look at at rookies, right? They're not going to be perfect. But when you get the guy in there, it's it's looking at the growth, looking at the growth. How are they progressing from week to week? Are they making the same mistakes twice, right? Because there's going to be mistakes, like I said. Are they making the same mistakes twice? Uh, You look at Fred Johnson, we'll talk about in a second here. But look, Fred Johnson, he was making mistakes in in those last couple games he played in. But he was correcting them series to series. All right, like he's that smart and he can process it. Jermaine Pratt, another example here. All right, with Jermaine Pratt, Pratt was getting a lot of negative press right away. All right, the way they were playing, the way they were working in, they were giving him a taste. They were giving him a series here or there. And then usually what would happen was he'd get about 10 reps 
and then he'd have a terrible missed tackle or he wouldn't be in the right place. He'd have some kind of critical error and they pull him off the field. Now, that's fine. All right. As a coach, I get that because players need to know that when they make mistakes, there are consequences. And what is most valuable to a player is playing time. That is a good method of coaching to do that. However, when we look at pro football focus and we look at their grades, when a guy plays 10 reps, makes a terrible mistake on the last rep, and then goes out, his grade's going to look bad. And that's why Pratt's grade was so bad at the beginning of the year. PFF grades, like any other statistic, are much more valuable when you have a sample size of 50, all right, playing the majority of a game, compared to 10, playing a couple drives, all right? And much more valuable when you play an entire season compared to playing in one game. It's not a knock on PFF at all. It's just the way they were playing him. There wasn't a big enough sample size to really get a judge on him. Because if you're going to roll with him, if you let him play that entire game, okay, he makes that mistake. And then if he has 10 plays that are that are good after that, you know, maybe and maybe he has one big play and he, you know, picks off the ball or, or causes a fumble or something like that, right? His grade is going to slowly work its way back up. But when you pull the guy after a critical error, his grade is what it is, all right? And you've got that outlier, that critical error, that low score that's going to bring down the rest of it. Uh, so expectations for this year's rookies, and we'll talk about the two first-round draft picks, all right, uh, 2019s and 2020s. All right, Joe Burrow. Look, we all have high expectations for Joe Burrow, but look, it's going to take time. He's going to throw some picks. He's going to throw some bad picks, okay? But does he throw the same bad pick twice in a row, all right? Or does he learn those uh, from those mistakes? And I think he's the type of guy that's going to learn from those mistakes. Everything we've seen from him says he's the type of guy that's going to learn from those mistakes. Jonah Williams is probably going to get Joe Burrow smoked at some point. He's a super smart guy, all right? He's a really good player, but he's probably going to make a mistake, and we're probably all going to freak out because it gets, uh, you know, it gets QB one hit. It's going to happen. All right, we've got to realize there's a learning curve for these guys. All right, and we'll expect them to be better and better year to year. With Burrow, the big year is 2021, and we've seen this with a number of other quarterbacks too. Right, it was Mahomes' second year starting with it was uh, you know, Lamar Jackson in, in his second year that he won the MVP. It's gonna take time, and look at Burrow at LSU too. Okay. He wasn't bad at LSU his first year, and he got better towards the end of the year. If you watch all the film from his junior year, those last couple games, he was pretty good. All right? He was pretty good. But in the offseason, not only did they change their scheme, all right? That's a, that's a part of it. But a big part of it was after spring practice, he and his receivers threw extra balls to each other. Throughout the summer, he and his receivers got together and threw balls to each other. They built that relationship, that understanding, all right? And... Year two was what it was, right? We all know what it was. So that's the expectation. Look, there's going to be mistakes. We're going to see some flashes. We're going to see some good things. I think he is going to be good. And I think the Bengals will be competitive. But it's year two, right? That's the year we should be looking forward to taking off. All right. Uh, so good transition here. That's the other thing uh, to expect from rookies is patience. All right. We got to give it time. Look. Drew Sample was kind of just starting to get some more reps, and then he got hurt last year. I think some people have kind of sold on Drew Sample right away. Some people sold on him as soon as he was drafted because they didn't like the pick, right? I I see some really good things in Sample. Is he going to be George Kittle? Is he going to be Travis Kelsey? I'm not saying that, but I think he, he can be what this offense needs him to be, and I think he can be, you know, 40 catch, 400 yard receiver who's getting some good blocks on rundowns and helping them move the chains on passing downs. So don't give up on these guys. Tight end is one of the most difficult positions to translate to the NFL because there's a lot asked of those guys, all right? There's a lot of different alignments. They're, they're attached tight ends. They're in the backfield. They're spread out wide, all right? They've got to know passing routes. They've got to know run blocking schemes. They've got to understand pass blocking schemes. So there's a lot that is asked of these guys. So tight end can take a while to transition. In year two, we should expect to see some things out of Drew Sample. T. Higgins is another example. 
Wide receivers can have a difficult time transitioning as well. Sometimes you see these guys take off right away, but sometimes it takes a little bit of, bit of time. Higgins might have trouble getting on the field because there is some depth of that position. Uh, so how quickly can he get ready and, and be ready to go? Look, like I said, sometimes we see these guys take a year. And then there's A.J. Green that came in and, and was lighting up as a rookie. So I'm not saying don't expect anything out of T. Higgins this year. I'm just saying that could take a little bit more time than, than we want it to. So be patient with T. Higgins if he's not getting the reps or if he's making some mistakes early on. Draft slots do not matter. Okay? Look. At the end of the day, it's about winning football games. And you draft guys high because you think they're good. But what they did on their college film means nothing once you get to the NFL. All right? It's a sign of potential. It means they're going to get more opportunities. But at the end of the day, you got to look at what they're doing on the NFL field. We'll go all the way back to Trey Hopkins, right? Trey Hopkins was an undrafted free agent. Now we, he's the best lineman the Bengals have. All right? Um well, hopefully, hopefully we're saying that's Jonah in a uh, in a month or two here. But that guy had to fight, all right. Undrafted free agent, spent a bunch of time on the practice squad. He had to fight, and at the end of the day, very good player for the Bengals. Fred Johnson, undrafted free agent, didn't even originally go to the Bengals, all right. At the end of the year, he was playing pretty well as an undrafted, you know, free agent coming in there. So you've got to look at those guys for what they're doing in front of you not for where you drafted them. Hakeem Adeniji, a lot of people wanted the Bengals to take an offensive tackle higher. They didn't. They addressed other needs. They got Adeniji, who was extremely talented, all right, at the end of the draft. Don't let where he was drafted fool you. He is very good, all right? Jim Turner was very high on this guy, okay? Now, is he going to come in and be a starter right away? Probably not. Could he, like Fred Johnson, start getting some looks at the end of the year? Maybe, all right? He might be able to do that. So don't judge where they were drafted. Judge them for who they who they are now. And we'll say the same thing with linebacker. Look, the Bengals drafted three linebackers this year. Logan Wilson, third round. Uh, Akeem Davis-Gaither, fourth round. And Marcus Bailey in the seventh round. Marcus Bailey might be the best of those linebackers at the end of the day, all right? All three of those guys are really day, day two talents. They're they're in a pretty close cluster to me, what they do. I think Akeem Davis-Gaither, I'm going to I kind of put him to the side a little bit. Uh, like, he can play linebacker, but I don't know. I think he's kind of more of a Von Bell kind of guy. I mean, he's not really going to be a deep safety, but he's a smaller in the box guy. He can do some things athletically, play on the edge, things along those lines. But look... You know, Bailey can do a lot of the same things Logan Wilson can. So, who plays better in camp but with between those guys, between Josh Pines, Jermaine Pratt, who, who was coming back? And it shouldn't matter that Bailey was a seventh-round pick. If he's the dude, you play the dude, all right? So, judge what they do on the field, not what they did on their college film. At the end of the day, you are how you perform. You're not your testing numbers. You're not where you went to college. You are how you perform, and that's how you need to look at these guys. Opportunity, okay? There is going to be a great opportunity for a defensive tackle. And Rennell Wren, who was drafted in 2019, you're up, brother. All right, now with uh, with Josh Tupo out, this creates a, a great opportunity for Wren. Is he ready? Has he been doing what he needs to do? Did he develop enough last year? Is he ready to take advantage of it? That's the big question. The Bengals did not draft a defensive tackle. They did, however, pick up two undrafted free agents, Tyler Clark from Georgia, Trey Deshaun from Kansas State. One of those guys is probably going to make this roster. With Josh Tupo around, I don't know if I'd say that, but there's a good chance one of those guys makes it now. Uh, a lot of talk about Clark, and they give him a slightly higher signing bonus, I believe. But, man, Deshaun's bigger, and I think he moves a little better, too. All right? Uh, so... There's some interesting things. Like both of those guys have some really interesting things. Where Clark's a guy that like he's he's not he plays a lot more stout than he looks. All right, he's he's a sub 300 pound guy, but people have a lot of trouble moving him. So there's an opportunity there, and the lack of opportunity is also a factor here. Look, Stanley Morgan Jr. didn't get much of an opportunity receiver last year. Probably not going to get a very good opportunity receiver this year. 
But he did some really good things on special teams. That's where a lot of these guys are going to have to get in. Travion Williams, Rodney Anderson, they're buried on the depth chart behind two talented running backs. If they get an opportunity on offense, they got to take advantage. But Travion took advantage on special teams last year, all right? And, uh, and got a lot of reps on special teams. Obviously, Anderson dealing with injuries and things is a little bit of a different story. Uh, Khalid Kareem, going to be a little bit tough for him to get a, some reps on the edge on defense. He might have to find a special teams role for himself as well, all right? He's a big guy, but, but he can move. He can play a role on some of those special teams as well. So, look, looking at all these guys, it's about finding that role and being ready when there is an opportunity. Because there could be an opportunity at one of those positions. All it takes is an injury. All it takes is an opt-out. Like, these things happen, okay? Uh, and this year, more than ever, these things happen. So, you've got to be ready, but then you've got to be fighting for other spots, fighting to find a role on special teams. And just because you don't see a guy get out there, you know, it doesn't always mean that he's not hes not what you thought he was when you drafted him. Sometimes it means the opportunity just hasn't presented itself. All right, so the big takeaway here is do not judge rookies like you judge other players. You've got to account for the fact that they're going to make mistakes, that sometimes these things take time, and you've got to look at the learning curve more than what they're doing on a given play, okay? So mistakes will happen. Look at development. Does he make the same mistake twice? That's the big thing, all right? Or is he correcting mistakes, going out there and fixing it? Patience, okay? It doesn't always happen in year one. Some guys it takes a little bit of time for. Have patience, all right? Draft slots don't matter. Your draft spot is your potential, all right? And your potential will get you more opportunity. It will get you another try when you don't succeed right away. It'll get you another try when you get cut from a team. However, at the end of the day, you got to win games. And you got to roll with the players that are going to help you win games. Can this person win games? I don't care if he was drafted in the first round or the seventh round. He's an undrafted free agent. You've got to put the guys in the field that are helping you win games. And opportunity. All right. Some players get thrust into a role because of need, because of injury, what have you. Michael Jordan is, is an example of that. Michael Jordan probably wasn't expected as a day th uh, three pick to be thrust into a role like he was. But Clint Bowling, right? He gone. So that put him, uh, gave him that opportunity. So some get the opportunity. Others had to fight their way up to the depth chart, all right? And be ready to take advantage when the opportunity presents itself. So that's the video for today. It's just a way to kind of look at rookies. It's okay to have expectations. You want to have high expectations of these guys, but you also have to be real about it. And you have to realize, hey, these guys are going to make mistakes. There's a learning curve involved, and it's about that progression more than it's about playing mistake-free football right away. So thanks for checking out the video. I'll keep going with the uh, position previews, probably get back on to those next week. So make sure you, you are uh, checking those out. Thanks for tuning in. Who day go Bengals? Red seven, hot route.